In a tranquil valley nestled between majestic mountains, a serene village thrived, untouched by the hustle and bustle of the outside world. The villagers lived simple, content lives, guided by the teachings of Buddha. Among them was a wise monk, Master Kaido, whose insights and teachings were renowned throughout the region. His temple, perched atop a hill, was a sanctuary of peace and enlightenment. Chapter 1, The Arrival of the Seeker On a crisp spring morning, the tranquility of the village was interrupted by the arrival of a weary traveler. His name was Hiroshi, a man of about thirty, with eyes that spoke of a restless soul. Hiroshi had wandered far and wide in search of meaning. Having amassed and lost fortunes, always feeling an emptiness that wealth could not fill, as Hiroshi approached the temple, he was greeted by Master Kaido, who sensed the heavy burden of material desire and spiritual confusion weighing on the traveler. Welcome, seeker, said the monk, his voice a calm breeze in Hiroshi's stormy mind. What brings you to our humble abode? I have chased wealth all my life, Hiroshi replied, but it has brought me neither peace nor joy. I seek guidance, Master Kaido. Master Kaido nodded, understanding the eternal conflict within Hiroshi. Come, sit with me. Let us explore the teachings of Buddha together. Chapter 2 The Birth Dates of Destiny As the days turned into weeks, Hiroshi immersed himself in the teachings of Buddhism, finding solace in the simplicity and depth of its wisdom. One evening, under the light of a full moon, Master Kaido shared a story from the ancient texts, one that spoke of karma and destiny, long ago, began Master Kaido, there was a wise sage who could see the threads of karma that wove the fabric of our lives. He foretold that those born under certain celestial alignments would encounter great wealth, not as a reward, but as a test of their spirit. Hiroshi listened intently as the monk continued. The sage identified three birth dates, the 3rd of March, the 9th of September, and the 12th of December. Those born on these dates would have the potential to amass great fortunes by their 30th year, but their true challenge would be to find peace and enlightenment despite their wealth. Intrigued, Hiroshi asked, Do you believe this to be true, Master? Master Kaido smiled gently. The universe has its ways, Hiroshi. It is not the wealth that defines us, but what we do with it and how we let it influence our journey towards enlightenment. Chapter 3, The Birth of Wealth Among the villagers were three young individuals, each born on one of the foretold dates. Aiko, born on the 3rd of March, was a talented artist who painted the village's most beautiful murals. Kenji, born on the 9th of September, was a skilled craftsman, known for his exquisite woodwork. And Mei, born on the 12th of December, had a gift for music, her melodies echoing through the valley like whispers of the divine, as each of them approached their 30th year, the villagers noticed an unusual change. Aiko's paintings began to attract wealthy patrons from distant lands. Kenji's wooden creations were sought after by affluent collectors, and Mei's music drew the attention of influential patrons who showered her with gifts. The village buzzed with excitement, marveling at the fulfillment of the sage's prophecy. However, Aiko, Kenji, and Mei felt an unsettling disquiet. Despite their newfound wealth, they sensed a growing void within their hearts. They turned to Master Kaido for guidance, hoping to find the peace that eluded them. Chapter 4, The First Lesson, Impermanence Master Kaido welcomed the three into the temple, sensing their inner turmoil. You have been blessed with wealth, he said, but remember, all things are transient. 
Wealth, like everything else, is impermanent. Aiko, Kenji, and Mei listened as the monk shared the story of Prince Siddhartha, who left his palace and renounced his wealth to seek enlightenment. The Buddha taught us that clinging to material possessions only leads to suffering. True peace comes from understanding the impermanent nature of all things. Contemplating these words, Aiko realized that her attachment to her paintings and the recognition they brought was a source of her unrest. Kenji saw that his pride in his craftsmanship had created an illusion of self-worth tied to external validation. Mei understood that the admiration she received for her music had become a chain, binding her to the material world. Chapter 5, The Second Lesson, Compassion As the seasons changed, Master Kaido continued to guide Aiko, Kenji, and Mei through their spiritual journey. One day, he spoke of compassion. Wealth can be a powerful tool for good if used with a compassionate heart. The Buddha taught us to alleviate the suffering of others and to act with kindness and generosity. Inspired, Aiko began to teach painting to the village children, finding joy in sharing her art. Kenji started a workshop where he trained young apprentices, passing on his skills and creating a sense of community. Mei organized musical gatherings, using her talent to bring people together and heal their hearts, through their acts of compassion. Aiko, Kenji, and Mei discovered a deeper fulfillment than wealth had ever provided. They saw the happiness their efforts brought to others, and this selfless service began to fill the void within them. Chapter 6, The Third Lesson, Mindfulness One serene morning, Master Kaido introduced the practice of mindfulness. To find true peace, he said, we must live in the present moment, fully aware and accepting of what is. Aiko, Kenji, and Mei embraced this practice, learning to focus on their breath, their thoughts, and their actions without judgment. As they cultivated mindfulness, they noticed a profound shift in their lives. The restlessness that had plagued them began to fade. Replaced by a calm and centered presence, Aiko found that her art became a meditative practice, each brushstroke a reflection of her inner state. Kenji discovered a deeper connection to his craft, feeling the wood's texture and the rhythm of his tools with heightened awareness. Mei's music became a spiritual expression, each note a testament to her inner peace. Chapter 7, The Fourth Lesson, Detachment As their journey continued, Master Kaido taught them the importance of detachment. We must learn to let go, he said, not only of material possessions but also of our desires, fears, and ego. Aiko, Kenji, and Mei began to practice detachment, releasing their attachment to the outcomes of their actions. Aiko let go of the need for her art to be perfect, embracing the imperfections as part of the creative process. Kenji stopped seeking praise for his work, finding contentment in the act of creation itself. Mei released her fear of failure, allowing her music to flow freely from her heart, through detachment, they discovered a new sense of freedom. No longer bound by their desires and fears, they experienced a lightness of being and an unshakable inner peace. Chapter 8, The Wheel of Karma One day, as the sun set behind the mountains, casting a golden glow over the valley, Master Kaido gathered Aiko, Kenji, and Mei for a final lesson. You have walked the path of wisdom, he said, and have come to understand the true nature of wealth and happiness. Now, it is time to reflect on the wheel of karma. He explained that karma is the law of cause and effect, where our actions create ripples that return to us in various forms. Your wealth was not a mere coincidence, Master Kaido said. 
It was the result of your past deeds, a test of your spirit. By using your wealth with compassion, mindfulness, and detachment, you have created positive karma that will guide you towards enlightenment. Aiko, Kenji, and Mei felt a profound gratitude for Master Kaido's teachings. They realized that their journey was not about accumulating wealth, but about using it as a means to grow spiritually and help others. They had learned that true happiness and peace come from within, and that their actions, guided by the principles of Buddhism, could create a harmonious and meaningful life. Chapter 9 The Enlightened Path Years passed, and the village flourished, enriched not by the wealth of a few, but by the collective spirit of compassion and mindfulness. Aiko, Kenji, and Mei continued to thrive, their lives intertwined with the well-being of their community, Aiko's art became a source of inspiration and healing, her murals depicting stories of compassion and the impermanence of life. Kenji's workshop grew into a place of learning and creativity, where apprentices found not only skills but also a sense of purpose and belonging. May's music resonated far beyond the village, touching hearts and spreading the message of mindfulness and peace. Master Kaido, now an elder, watched with a serene smile as his teachings bore fruit. He saw that the true wealth of his village lay in the harmony and enlightenment of its people. The prophecy had been fulfilled, not in the accumulation of riches, but in the realization of spiritual wealth. In this tale, we see the essence of Buddhist teachings come to life. The dates of birth, the 3rd of March, the 9th of September, and the 12th of December, signify not just the potential for material wealth but, more importantly, the opportunity for spiritual growth and enlightenment. It is a reminder that while destiny may bestow certain gifts upon us, it is our actions and intentions that shape our true path and purpose. Thanks for watching. Hope enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Just click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you'd like to see next. See you in the next video.